Chapter 7, The Heroes The political prisoners were liberated a few days later. There were 3,000 of them. We knew two of them. Saimek Jari, born February 20th, 1945, in Loristan, professor, journalist, crime, wrote subversive articles in the Kihan. Date of imprisonment, July 1973. Released, March 1979. Political conviction, communist. Mohsen Shakiba, born November 22, 1947, in Rakht. Profession, revolutionary. Crime, revolutionary. Date of imprisonment, April 1971. Released, March 1979. Political conviction, communist. I had heard about Siamik even before the revolution. He was the husband of my mother's best friend. How long since you had any news about him? Ten months. Bring Lally with you and come by today. We'll talk about it. Lally was Siamik's daughter. Where's your father? On a trip? Don't you know that when they keep saying someone is on a trip, it really means he is dead? At least, that was the case with my grandpa. Boo-hoo! The truth is sometimes hard to accept. Boo-hoo! Margie says that Daddy is dead. No, no, of course he's not. Go to your room and stay there. Nobody will accept the truth. After the revolution, I realized that you could be mistaken. Today is a great day, darling. We've invited Lali's father and Mohsen. They both just left prison. Lali's father? What does he look like? You'll soon find out. Ding dong. Siamik. I'm so happy that you are back. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. I know. Oh, Taj. Still a beauty. Still a flatterer. And this must be Margie. Lord, the last time I saw her... She was only three years old. Time is irretrievable. When they've arrested me, Lally barely spoke, and now she is a real young lady. You want to play? No. Well, yes. Yes. Ding dong. That must be Mosin. Mosin, for God's sake, I thought you were dead. Me? Dead? What a joke. In prison, they called me the man with seven lives. You know each other? In prison, we all knew each other. You remember the day they pulled out my nails? They have grown back since. Not in a normal way, but at least I have them. Our torturers received special training from the CIA. Real scientists. They knew each part of the body. They knew where to hit. Look, on your souls there are nerves that lead directly to the brain. They whipped me with thick electric cables so much that this looks like anything but a foot, not to mention putting out their cigarettes on our backs and thighs. My parents were so shocked that they forgot to spare me this experience. Any news on Amadi? Amadi. Amadi was assassinated as a member of the guerrillas. He suffered hell. He always had cyanide on him in case he was arrested, but he was taken by surprise, and unfortunately, he never had a chance to use it so he suffered the worst torture. How do you like this? Confess, where are the others? They burned him with an iron. I never imagined that you could use that appliance for torture. In the end, he was cut to pieces. He was in my class at the university. It's a good thing they didn't kill your father in prison, but you have to admit I wasn't completely wrong when I said he was not on a trip. Maybe, but my father is a hero. All torturers should be massacred. My father was not a hero. My mother wanted to kill people, so I went out to play in the street. Mm -hmm. Those stories had given me new ideas for games. The one who loses will be tortured. Yeah, what kind of torture? I have imagination too. The mustache on fire torture consists of pulling on two sides of the upper lip, the twisted arm, the mouth filled with garbage. Back at home that evening, 
I had the diabolical feeling of power. But it didn't last. I was overwhelmed. Don't cry, darling. They will pay for what they have done. But I thought one should forgive. Bad people are dangerous, but forgiving them is too. Don't worry. There is justice on earth. I didn't know what justice was now that the revolution was finally over. Once and for all, I abandoned the dialectic materialism of my comic strips. The only place I felt safe was in the arms of my friend. Chapter 8, Moscow So my father was not a hero. Is everything all right, Margie? Yeah, sure. If only he had been in prison. They cut my dad's leg off, but he still didn't confess. So they cut off an arm as well. Too much. Luckily, one day, they told me about my uncle Anush, the only one of my father's brothers I had never met, because he had been in prison, and now, for the first time in thirty years, my grandma was reunited with her six children. And I had a hero in my family. Naturally, I loved him immediately. Why don't you come and live with us? Such a sweet child. I'll sleep here tonight and tell you stories. Are you married? Do you have children? How old are you? Later, Margie, later. Don't bother him too much. He's tired. Good night. Don't worry. We're fine. Okay, here goes. I was 18 years old when my uncle Faradun and his friends proclaimed the independence of the Iranian province of Azerbaijan. Wow. Faradun elected himself Minister of Justice of this new little republic. Gentlemen, Justice is the basis of democracy. All men should be equal in the eyes of the law. My ideas were the same as his, but your grandfather remained faithful to the Shah. My son, a traitor, go away and join up with my idiotic brother. You'll both end up being executed. Do you hear me? Executed. I became Faradun's secretary. It was a time of dreams and enthusiasm. Azerbaijan is only the beginning. We are going to free Iran province by province. I'm certain you're right, Uncle. One night, I had a terrible nightmare. Dead people. Blood. The next morning, I was so tormented, I had to see Faradun. Shit. The Shah's, the Shah's soldiers. Good God, Faradun. I wanted to do something, but there was nothing I could do. They arrested him, and I ran away. What a story. For days and days, I walked through the falling snow. I crossed the Alvarez Mountains to find refuge at my parents' house in Astaria. I was hungry, I was cold, but I continued. I was nearly dead when I arrived. Bang, bang, bang. My God, Anush! What's going on? Who's bothering us at this hour? Come quickly, it's our son Anush. He has fainted. What is he doing here? Why didn't he stay with his nice uncle? You always say the right thing at the right time. Help me now. Okay, okay, calm down. Oh my God, my son, my dear son. It's a bit late to show your affection. But the Shah's police were looking for me. I was not safe with my parents, so I decided to go into exile. I swam across the Aras River and arrived in the USSR. Holy smoke, Lally's dad hasn't even been to the USSR. What happened to your Uncle Faradun? He met his destiny. I learned that he knew the Shah's army was coming to arrest him. He could have run away like most of his friends did, but he decided to stay. All is lost. I am at your mercy, gentlemen. At the time, he had a girlfriend who was involved in his political movement. A girl from a good family. Faradun, you have a visitor. My love. My darling, you shouldn't have come. You are making it worse for yourself. Let's make a child. Here? Right now? Yes, I paid the guard. He won't bother us. I'm going to be executed tomorrow. I know. I want a living memory of you. You know what it is like to be an unmarried mother in this country? You will be shunned. Life will be hell. I don't care. Let's make a child. She became pregnant that very night and left for Switzerland soon after. I know that she had a son. I heard he looks a lot like his father. Are you all right? Uh, 
Do you have other stories like that? Yes. I'll make you a hot chocolate. And you, what did you do in the USSR? First I went to Leningrad, then Moscow, where I became a student. I have a doctorate in Marxism, Leninism. Dialectic materialism? What? You know about that? I read the comic book version. Later, I married and had two children, two girls. Look, why doesn't the lady have a head? She was my wife. We are divorced. Okay, but why is her head scratched out? Russians aren't like us. What? Don't they have heads? It's hearts they don't have. They don't know how to love. After the separation, I felt very lonely. I missed my country, my parents, my brothers. I dreamt about them often. I decided to go home. I got a false passport and disguised myself. I guess I wasn't very convincing. They soon recognized me. Hey, you with the beard and sunglasses, halt. They put me in prison for nine years. Nine years? Better than Lolly's father. They say you were tortured terribly, like Siamik, Lolly's father. Your father told you that? No, he told it to mom and I heard him. What my wife made me suffer was much worse. I tell you all this because it's important that you know our family memory must not be lost, even if it's not easy for you, even if you don't understand it all. Don't worry, I'll never forget. And now it's time for bed. What? The story is finished? Here, take this swan I made in prison out of bread. In prison? Pleasant dreams. There are lots of heroes in my family. My grandpa was in prison, my uncle Anush too. For nine years, he was even in the USSR. My great uncle Faradun proclaimed a democratic state and he was too much.